right, guys. Welcome to a special episode of Bledsoe Said So. Um, tonight, we have Isaac Weishaupt, one of my very favorite podcasters in the world. Um, just a one-of-a-kind, brilliant mind who is actually our very first repeat guest outside of family on Bledsoe Said So. Nick couldn't be with us tonight. He had something come up last second. So tonight is just going to be me, Alex, and Isaac rocking with it. Um, Nick will be here with us in spirit. So Isaac, they know who you are. Uh, before we jump into it, is is there anything you want to you know lay down with a plug before we get rolling? Oh, you know I love the plug. Uh, well, right. first off, thanks for having me on as the first return guest. That's pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, I'll accept that. I'll accept that honor of going down in the record books here. Uh, no, as far as plugging stuff, you know, usually I've been on pace to write about one book a year. Last year was the first book I didn't, or the first year I did not write a book. Uh, this year I, I wasn't, and I actually wasn't planning on writing a book. It's, it's kind of too busy with the podcast being a full-time thing now, but, um, I'm really deep into twin peaks right now. So I, in my fantasy, and I don't know if this would ever, I don't know if this will happen, but I, I'm planning on doing I, I'm almost thinking about writing a book about the Twin Peaks show and the occult symbolism, but I don't know if that would be worth doing or not because I feel like people have tread into that territory, but that's, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's kind of the thing that's been on the back of my mind. If people have been following me on social media, I've been, mm -hmm. I've been uh, talking about my ups and downs of the Twin Peaks experience. Yeah. I've actually, I've seen the first episode and I thought it was really cool. And like I've been recommended, you got to watch Twin Peaks. It's crazy. It's crazy. So like maybe us talking about it tonight will be like a, yeah, a, a, you know, a catalyst for me. I'm willing to go as deep into Twin Peaks as as you as you want. And like our audience, you know, as they may recall, I learned from you how to break down films, you know, by listening to your show for years. So like, oh wow, thanks. Man. You know, it's totally welcome here if you yeah. wanted to go yeah. into that. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. Let's talk about Twin Peaks for a minute, uh, okay. just because I've been a, I've been absolutely obsessed with it. So my. It sounds like you're in the same boat that many of us have been in because several people have reached out with the same experience. They've said, oh, everyone's been telling me I got to watch Twin Peaks, mm -hmm. you know, and this is a show that was on, uh, what do you call it? I don't know, major TV, like the, the you know, 90s, CBS right? type stuff in the 90s. Yeah, 1990 was season one. And I never watched it. And I tried to, because a lot of people said, oh, you got to watch it for the conspiracy occult angle. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I watched episode one at least three times. I watched this thing. I would watch it and I'd be like, God, this is boring. Mm -hmm. And I would give up. And then a year later, say, okay, let's try it again. Then a year later, okay, let's try it again. So it was, it took several efforts. And then in, in October of 22, I got sick. I got the, uh, I got the dreaded thing that will never go away. Finally caught me. And it, mm. and it and it got me good. It, it wrecked my immune system. I'm just, I'm just getting over another sickness. I was sick. I've been sick five times since mm. October, which is unheard of for me. Completely unheard of. But that's a whole nother subject. We don't need to get into it. But I mean, I'm sure everyone's got theories in the mind. I've got my own. Anyway, so I, I was sick for a long time, and I finally said, you know what? I'm gonna watch this damn show. And I watched it and I made it to about episode three and I was ready to tap out and I got on Twitter or I don't remember. I think it was Twitter. I was like, I was like, really? Like this show is corny. Like what, what do people like about this show? I don't get it. And someone on there said, you got to watch it. Like it's a soap opera. And I thought, okay, that, that's an interesting angle because it, it did have a lot of 90 soap opera vibes. Mm hmm and because i had nothing better to do anyway i thought okay all right let's give it a shot and then by about episode five of season one i was hooked i said okay i get it now and it, it's weird you know david lynch obviously is a weird dude have you ever seen any, any david lynch films name some super popular uh, ones eraser head mulholland yes Drive. i've seen eraser head <laughs> okay and that's it's a really weird one. bizarre right yeah very bizarre and the show isn't quite as bizarre uh, as far as like season. So season one is only, I think it's nine episodes. Mm -hmm. And the episode zero, the pilot is an hour and a half. And then each episode one through eight is about an hour. And then episode nine, the season finale is another hour and a half. So it's, it's a lot of content to get through. Right. 
And it lays out an interesting story. I don't, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody. Uh, yeah, no plot spoilers coming, anybody. Uh, it's but, okay if if you want to spoil it for me. That's totally okay. If you want to, you know, no, I want I want because I want you to experience okay. the show. So okay. you know, I've got a close friend out here, uh, Jimmy the Jackhammer, and I'm I'm trying to talk him into watching going down this journey too. Mm-hmm. And it's not for everyone. It's I, that good. I think so, but okay. it's not for everyone. I I had my wife had she stuck in there. She made it to season two and she tapped out about halfway through. Um, it's not for everyone because it's a little weird. It it dances in and out of every genre you can think of, and it's for me the sales the sales pitch I would give is that it's bizarre, but it's it gives you just enough for you to just analyze it and say something's going on here. I don't know what it is, right? And that's the and that's that's the I, I caught this twin peaks parasite in my brain and i can't let it go so this is three four months now since i started episode one wow of season one and i you know season one is really good then you've got i think it i don't there's, so there's a film called fire walk with me i i think that's after season two yeah it's after season two so season one happens and then season two which is like 18 episodes so it's an even bigger commitment it's a lot of hours and you know it's really good but then in the, in the second half of season two i almost tapped out again because wow. it because it kind of changes up the storyline just a little bit and you're like oh well this isn't really what i want to watch and and you you know you gets kind of corny in parts then it gets kind of weird in parts but then he kind of reels it back in by the end and then the film which was made in 92 i think 93 fire walk with me is is stellar because it re it's sort of a not a prequel but yeah it's kind of a prequel where it shows you what's going on as the background of the story about the death of this this young lady named laura palmer okay that's from the first episode right the body that they find yeah that's right okay. yes yeah the yeah. wrapped in plastic that. yeah 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 uh and and that's what the whole story is about is about laura palmer and it seems like it's just a boring soap opera drama but when you get into it and you, and, and when you watch, if you watch it, you know, when you watch it, you'll catch all these like little brief symbolism here and there that he puts in there. Like you'll catch that he uses owl imagery a lot, you know, and that's of course, uh, you know, you could take that a couple directions. You've got the Bohemian Grove cremation of care ceremony with the owl statue. You've got the Gnostic um, goddess of wisdom or Athena or Athena you know, Minerva. Yeah. Yeah, lots. A lot, lot, lots of angles to take it, right? Then you've got, um, <laughs> I, I'll give you one, because because I kind of took notes, because I didn't know where the story was going. So I would watch the episode, and I would kind of write down some various things. I was like, well, this is kind of weird. The, there's, a, there's a few strange things that you'll catch. There's, and, and this is the theory that I'm, I'm, I'm going to work on, mm-hmm. and I don't know if someone else has done this yet or not, because... Let me finish the journey and then I'll come back to my theory. Okay. Um, sorry. I'm really excited about Twin Peaks and I haven't, I haven't structured an argument about it yet. So this is the first time I've ever talked about it with anybody. Oh, nice. I'm honored. <clears throat> yeah. This is the first time. So, so I watched season one and then I watched season two and then I watched the movie and the movie was like awesome. I was like, dude, this is great. And what's crazy is that in, I think it's season one, there's a, there's a part of the story where, the one character says the other something about something, an event happening 25 years from that point. So what does David Lynch do? He waits 25 years and makes season three in okay. 20, 2017. Yeah. I heard about that. I thought it was just a reboot. Are you, are you like saying yeah. that it may have been very intentional? <laughs> I, I, I mean, no. 25 I, years to like, exactly. It's been 25 years. Uh-huh. Okay. That I, that's pretty crazy. It's fascinating. And and they, they released it, I think it was 2017, and they released it on Showtime. And it, uh, you know, it's David Lynch again. I, I believe it's Mark Frost, who was the, the, the other creator of the show. And he's got damn near every actor back on the whole season. Every actor from the original 90 series oh, from 1990. Wow. Okay. I mean, there's a couple people missing. Um, and then what's really interesting is that 
the one character, and I, this isn't a plot spoiler of any kind, but there's a character named the Log Lady in the uh, you know season one, season two, and she shows up for season three, 25 years later. And when they filmed it, she was very ill and she was actually dying. Mm. Um, like in real life. In real life. And it turns out that she had passed on right, you know, in line with the story somehow. It, it, lots of weird stuff going on with this mo- with this show. So season three, it um, I finished it. And he doesn't give you all the answers mm-hmm. at all. <laughs> so then I find out that they've written several books. There's a book called The Diary of Laura Palmer, which is a diary, obviously, of Laura Palmer, but it's referenced several times in the show. And um, I think David Lynch's daughter wrote that book. But either way, I read that book and it fills in a lot of the blanks. Then I then now I'm reading The Secret History of Twin Peaks, which I believe was written in 95 mm-hmm. um, after the, the whole first season one, season two and the movie. And I'm maybe a third of the way into that. And that's where things get really interesting. And then there's one more book called The Final Dossier that was released after season three so you know just a couple years ago but what you're going to like about this and uh and again this doesn't doesn't spoil a plot i don't think so but um there's a there's a there's part of this story because you're trying to piece together what's happening because it's not only about a girl dying and who a whodunit right it's not just that Mm -hmm. it's there's like a supernatural element right i mean supernatural element okay and we get into you know the phenomenon, the the alien entity phenomenon is part oh, of the storyline. Okay, it's not like every episode or the main crux of every episode, but it's a major part of the story. It's really strange because when you watch the show, it's almost like it's the most important part of the story, but it's not existent in the it's story. Not always even like present in no. every you know. It might go like five or six episodes without even referencing it. Kind of like that, yeah. Okay, and. I, I don't like I said it's 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 like a parasite in my brain of trying to figure out what's happening in these books. They fill in the blanks, so it's almost like David Lynch was doing a little revelation of the method where he was showing the masses this packaged up soap opera version of this story, but only certain people who could see through the 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 drama of the event. The Isaacs of the world <laughs> who, who are like right, have yeah. that lens to view it by. Yeah. And, and I think that's why it's got such popularity because there's a lot of folks out there that, that mm-hmm. are like, oh, I got to figure this mystery out. Right. And that's why they got all these books and it's a massive fan base. And that's why I'm I'm on the fence about. I don't know. I want to do it justice. And I also know that a million people have come up with their own theories about it. So I'm reading the books right now and what I want to do is finish reading the books and come up with a theory. Cause I've got different sort of uh, various aspects of it that I think are happening. Uh, I think there's an element of sex magic in there. I think there's elements of um, how should I say him exposing elites for their penchant for uh, certain inappropriate sexual activities. Is that like in the show yes it's very much there but it's not explicit right you know like i said i think this was on like you know cbs or something it was on one of those major networks made for tv yeah yeah so i mean he can only be so graphic but and this is the 90s too so like yeah not everybody's really talking about this stuff at the time i mean it wasn't until like what like 2012 when everybody all of a sudden started talking about this stuff yeah, because like with with Epstein, you know, the guy, mm-hmm. you know, kind of not I want to say flew under the radar, but wasn't really talked about till he was damn, you know, put in prison. Right. Um, but but there's all these various sort of strange things, but the but the UFO phenomenon thing is a major part of it, and you and you find that out more and more as you watch the show, and then when you read the book, uh I think Mark Frost wrote the books. But in the books, The Secret History of Twin Peaks, where I'm at right now in the book, he's going through the the history of, you know, Project Blue Book, Project Sign, Project Grudge, you know, the original investigations from the 40s and the 50s. 
mm-hmm. into UFOs, going back to Kenneth Arnold and Roswell um, and all those things. But what's but what's absolutely fascinating to me is that he's laying out an argument that this is related to um, the uh, uh, the atomic bomb testing of Manhattan Project. Hmm. Which is something I've always found real curious. You know, I, I there's a book called Trinity written by Jacques Vallée and uh, Paulo Harris, and I interviewed Paulo Harris on my show, and it talks about how the first UFO crash was not Roswell in '47. It was actually in New Mexico near White Sands, where they were doing the uh, near the Trinity site in 1945. I think it was like a week after they tested the first atomic bomb. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, there's a lot there's a lot of angles you can get into this thing from there, but but I'm gonna drop this one sort of <laughs> sort of strange oddity because I had read that book. In the book, it talks about how back in the '40s, all the scientists working on the Manhattan Project, Oppenheimer, and so on, there was a lo- you know it's a tiny town in the middle of nowhere where this Trinity site is. Uh, I think it's White Sands, New Mexico. I don't know what the name of the town is next to it, but anyway there's a place where they used to all meet up and it was called the owl cafe. Oh, okay. So, so all these pieces are, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I just, and, and I feel like this ties in, you ever heard of James Selby Downard? Mm-mm. So James Selby Downard was, he was kind of the, the real OG of uh, like synchro mysticism and mm-hmm. looking at symbolism and events and seeing if, Saying like, hey, are these are these rituals? Are we partaking of a ritual right now? Mm-hmm. Uh, he was he wrote the killing of the king ritual. If you've ever heard of that, with um, mm-hmm. they, there's a theory that that when John F. Kennedy was assassination assassinated, that it was part of a ritual called killing of the king that goes. Back. I have heard of that. Yeah, a lot of people in reference to the it. JFK thing. Yeah. Yes, I think I heard it on Tinfoil Hat or something. And that and that goes back to James Selby Downard and. Okay. He was t- he was talking a lot about the Trinity site and the f- atomic bomb testing. So this so it's weird because prior to me watching Twin Peaks, I was putting all these pieces together of all this happening, right? Mm-hmm. And in fact, in fact, I I just listened to uh, uh, Chris Jericho's podcast. He had a guest on there talking about Bohemian Grove, and he said that Oppenheimer actually originally floated the idea of the Manhattan Project at Bohemian Grove before it came to fruition. That doesn't shock me, man. And yeah. I wanted to say this because we started the show like with you mentioning how you used to write a book a year. I forgot to say then, you know, 20 minutes ago or whatever. I've actually read one of your books. You were kind of like before we even, you know, did shows together. I don't know if you recall, but you were we had gotten in touch with each other. I reached out to you on Twitter and, you know, we had been talking for a while, you know, even, you know, a year or more before we had been in the podcasting space together. And I was like, dude, I'm, I'm you know, really interested in, in your books. It's super cool research. And you sent me Use Your Illusion. I don't know if you recall that, but you sent me like an audio, like an audible version of it. And then I think I, I think I think you maybe sent me a Kindle version as well. And I read it. And it's I got to say, like for the audience out there listening, it's very well written, very well written. And I'm um, highly recommend it. And Isaac really breaks down. I love your approach there because it's like focusing on the occult aspects of UFOlogy, which is, you know, it's so fascinating. So just to right. plug your book there for a second. Thank you. And, 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 and thank you for that. That was actually my, uh, the last two books I wrote were user illusion one and two. It's kind of a user, user illusion. One has all the sort of the meat and potatoes behind what I'm trying to get across. And then user illusion two is, taking those ideas, presenting them as you see them in various films. Mm, uh, you know, I love like, that. Like, yeah, because I like to learn from examples that are familiar. So I, I chose various films that support the theory. So it's like E.T., Under the Skin, the John Carpenter Apocalypse Trilogy, which is The Thing, Prince of Darkness, Mouth of Madness, uh, Interstellar, and just a, a ton of movies. I go through each movie and say, okay, this is what happens in the movie. This is the symbolism. This is the idea and how it ties into the theories presented in Use Your Illusion 1, mm-hmm. which I, I want to ask you about. I want, I want your opinion on it. And um, because when I wrote the book, because here's, here's the thing is I've got this. I, I think you know me well enough, but maybe the audience might not. But 
I've got a Christian background. Uh, I grew up a Christian. I have doubts in it. Uh, and But ultimately, that's my belief system. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the organized religion elements I don't necessarily approve of or like or condone. I actually don't. I have a hard time buying into a lot of the things I'm supposed to buy into. Uh, but ultimately, it's like, mm, like that's what I go back to. And and it right. could just be that was programmed in from birth. And that's just what makes me feel comfortable because of that. I don't know. And I certainly don't condemn anyone who doesn't believe in it because I get it. I'd be like, it seems like a bunch of fairy tale nonsense. But that's ultimately what I believe. And when I wrote Yours, Your Illusion, you know, I was talking to my wife about it. <clears throat> and she was like, you know, I hope you don't. She was like, I hope you're not, I hope people don't read it and it, make it come across like, uh, like you're some judgmental Christian. You're saying that all aliens are, are demonic and we shouldn't make contact because that is an idea like sort of floated in the book in a way. So, like, I get what she was saying and I thought, no, I don't, I don't think it's coming across that way, but it's definitely an element where I'm saying, I'm not saying all aliens are demonic, but I am saying that we should be careful if we're trying to make contact. Like I personally uh, get a little nervous about making contact because I used to do ghost hunting and stuff like that. And I, and I, I feel like you can manifest these, these entities. And the question is, are you, are you manifesting a good one or a bad one? And you know, it's just a concern I have, right? Mm -hmm. It's totally reasonable. Yeah. And, and I know your experience with your family is, you know, you were on the receiving end of a lot of judgment from, uh, you know, Christian type folks. Yeah. People saying, Oh my God, you, you guys are talking to the the devil or whatever. Even now, man, dad's book is called UFO of God. And he very, (laughs) I mean, he very painfully goes into great lengths to even include like, it's not a Christian book by any means. It's Mm -hmm. really not. But like, there's even like Bible verses at the beginning of like important chapters, and he talks about how it's like what the faith he was raised in and the respect he has for it. There's people now saying like, this is evil, you know, blah blah blah. Like like Christian people, they've you know, in 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 all reality, like the people that have been the worst to us were the people who were the the old fashioned type of of Christian thinking, you know? Right. Yeah, they said there's no hate like a Christian's love or something like that, right? <laughs> yeah, my my dad said something funny a year or two ago. He was like you know, Christianity is a um peace, love and judge your neighbor. <laughs> it's it's true though, and like those are the things that turn people away. Like like I don't I don't regularly go to church. I haven't gone yeah. in a few years. But you know, it doesn't mean I, I I don't believe. I just there's there's elements of it that I'm just like, man, I can't get behind that. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, no, I feel you, man. I'm all, I'm all about like the very real, like genuinely existent phenomenon of the power of Christ. Like, mm -hmm. this is something that I truly believe is real. I just don't like all the rules. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I I get it, man. Yeah. There's a, yeah, I wanted to, I, I haven't read your dad's book yet. Uh, one of my close friends has, and he highly recommended it. I said, okay. I, I said, I said, man, uh, his, his name is Dr. Anteater. I said, Dr. Anteater, uh, I'm in a Twin Peaks rabbit hole right now, man. I, I can't, I literally, there's something wrong with my brain right now. It broke my brain because I seriously, I watched, you know, it's 50, 60 hours of Twin Peaks. I've watched it all mm-hmm. wow. and I'll wow. sit, I'll, I'll try to watch like a movie. Like I'm trying to catch up on movies, right? Like I haven't seen Babylon yet with the uh, Brad Pitt, you know, mm-hmm. and I'll watch it for about 20 minutes and I'll be like, Mm, I kind of want to review the the season two of what happened in Twin Peaks, and I'll put on <laughs> Twin Peaks again. I'm like, so now I'm in the process of watching it a second time, sort of piecemeal, to sort of see mm-hmm. what pieces I missed. Um, That's awesome. But going back to what your 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 dad's book there, you said there was Bible verses. <clears throat> yeah, like and, at like at the beginning of chapters. It's not like necessarily in the book. You you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Some right, right, chapters so. will have an introduction. You know, there, there's a in the Secret History of Twin Peaks book it's hard to know how much of it is is fiction because they present information in a fictional way but i think most of it's real history Mm -hmm. but anyway they uh the the fbi agent researching it and this is the 90s mind you uh the fbi agent in the book researching the the phenomenon that they're experiencing makes mention of eric von daniken and h and basically ancient alien Mm -hmm. theory without saying the term Mm -hmm. uh, about how like wow, they you know they they've been researching and there's references in the Bible to you know a phenomenon happening. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, anyway, it, it's interesting because this show, it doesn't obviously tie all these sort of important things together, but it's all there. And then when you read the books, you're like, oh, my God. And and I know in the book, I haven't got to that part yet, but someone someone sent me some images from the book. Um, shout out Spry Ute. Send me, and uh, they sent me images from the book, and I know they talk about Crowley and Jack Parsons in the book. Wow. Which, which makes sense. Yeah. Well, Please. then there's your answer right there, the revelation of the method theory. Which, by the way, for our, um, for our listeners, I've only ever, like, briefly talked about this, but could you, like – give like an elevator pitch of like what that even means. Yeah. Uh, the elevator pitch. Uh, so the idea is that if there's some kind of Illuminati control group and they practice occult methods, ritual magic, what have you, or they have plans and agenda for humanity that at some point when they realize that they've pretty much got what they wanted and, and we're all headed down the path and there's no way to turn back, they will reveal to the masses this, uh, this method, right? The revelation of the method and, and, and what it, you know, that's where the debate comes in. Well, first off, if all that's true, what is the, the method? What are they talking about? And uh, a good book would be, I can never remember the name of the damn book. Uh, Michael Hoffman wrote a book called secret societies and I think psychological warfare, I think it's called back in 2001, I think uh, right before nine 11, the copy I have says it's copyright from June of 2001 and he talks about how all these power structures have a revelation of the method that that uh, at some point they're going to show us. And and the 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 theory I've seen that I more or less think would be the one is the uh, some kind of Luciferian New World Order kind of entity way of uh, you know ushering in an Antichrist of some kind. And people think that Project Bluebeam is the the event that is going to do that, right? Um, Project Bluebeam, of course, being the uh, an, an artificial simulated invasion of aliens or UFOs, I should say. And you know, and and I don't know how deep you want into that. You want to get as deep as you want, man. Okay. Yeah, let's let's talk about Project Bluebeam for a second. Let's switch over to that. Alex is smiling. Uh, is that <laughs> is that is that his camera. jam? He just loves all conspiracy conversation. <laughs> okay, so all right, so I wrote about it in um, uh, User Illusion One, and the idea I'm, I'm going to get up my notes here because there's there's actually a good amount to get through. Uh, and I don't want to miss any of the important important aspects here. Uh, but the hang on a second here. The uh, okay, da, 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 da. The, the whole project, the idea behind it is to bring in a new world order. Or and or a new age antichrist through a false alien invasion, and this theory came up in the '90s, which it makes me wonder if this guy just didn't watch too much Twin Peaks, maybe. <laughs> but uh, Serge Manast, this journalist in '94, wrote an article about it. Uh, he was a journalist and a, a conspiracy theorist, right? And there's there's conspiracies about how he died. He died of a heart attack just a couple of years after he'd written this. And, you know, people say, well, maybe he was actually murdered. Uh, you never know. Right. Right. His claim, the short version, is that through a sequence of events that this this thing will happen. We don't know when uh, I postulate if it happens, it'll start in 2025. And I've got sort of rationale behind that. But he thinks that through NASA which maybe the U.S. Space Force would be part of this now because they just started the U.S. Space Force a few years ago. But anyway, back in the 90s, it, it, through NASA, they're going to reveal to the public the existence of alien life. And what's interesting is that since the 90s, there have been efforts to prove the existence of aliens uh, in inter- it, not interdimensional, but um, what do you call it? Like interstellar, mm-hmm. uh, like outer space aliens. Because those are two different things completely. I'm right. more of the, I believe in the interdimensional camp, but whatever. Uh, NASA, you're, you're more qualified to have an opinion on that than I'm I gonna, am. I'm going to, I'm going to wait and then I'm going to give my take. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the expert take. I'm just a jackass who reads through conspiracies. No, no, no. You're very well read. <laughs> so I just happen to have lived through a lot of these programs. Yeah, yeah. 
So NASA, they claimed the the chief scientist of NASA back in like 2017 when I wrote my my book, The Dark Path. I actually had a couple chapters on the alien phenomenon. And the chief scientist back then said that they were going to prove the existence of extraterrestrial life by the year 2025, which is very interesting. Like, why would they? I don't know. Like, what are they trying to make a bet on what year? Like, how would they know? Right. You want to hear something crazy about that? I do. When I was a younger guy, probably about 15, 16, maybe 17 at the latest, um, you'll read about this figure in my dad's book. Um, you know, when you get around to it someday, but there was a NASA scientist by the name of Hal Pobenmeyer who was coming and visiting our property as early as 2008, 2009, I believe. And it may be 2008. And, um, he had been involved with us studying us like in an official capacity for 11 years. He, he, he was older. He passed away in about 2019. And, um, he, he, he actually is one of the guys who was pretty, uh, prominent in, um, What's it called? Blue Book. Not Blue Bean, but Blue Book. Oh, okay. And like Alan J. Hynek was his mentor. Hmm. And he came to our property to debunk us. And he stuck around because he loved us so much and realized we were telling the truth. And anyway, one of the things he told us many years ago, I'm talking like, you know, the late 2000s, 2010, 2011, something like that. He told us that by the year 2025, all of the information about, uh, you know, UFOs and whatever would be publicly revealed. That's why I, one of the things about your book that blew my mind, because I had a guy at my house from NASA, like with like credentials telling us this stuff. And I'm like, how, how did Isaac figure that out? Uh, <laughs> like, what were you reading wow. to? Yeah, there's definitely something very significant about the year 2025. And, you know, for the, for the out of the box thinker, um, there's like a 12,000 year old star system by the, um, the Hindus, where they believe, you know, the, the cosmic cycles are split into the yugas. And according to this 12,000 year cycle, the Kali Yuga, which is the age of darkness, ends in 2025. Oh, interesting. Really okay. crazy when you think about it. So, of course, they're going to yeah. program us to believe it's all going to be dark times ahead. But I don't think so, man. I, I think uh, I think uh, a, a nice period of peace and happiness is just a few years around the corner. Man, I'll take it, dude. Yeah, I'll, however it comes, man, as long as it's peaceful. The, yeah. So the it's interesting about the Kali Yuga because I did a lot of research into Steve Bannon back when the whole Q mm -hmm. thing was really popular. And I did several shows on it, interviewed a guy who wrote a book called war for eternity. He was actually hanging out with Steve Bannon. And what was interesting is that Steve Bannon, who was uh, very cozy with Donald Trump, he was a proponent of this a sort of a cult philosophy called traditionalism. Uh, which is a, a theory espoused by um, Putin's right-hand man, Alexander Dugan. Uh, uh, if people recognize that name, it's because Alexander Dugan's daughter was murdered last year in a, a car bomb. They were, trying to, they were trying to get Dugan, uh, they being, I don't know, Ukraine, who knows, right? I don't, I don't right. get into geopolitics. I don't know what the hell's going on. Right. But anyways, uh, there was, anyways, the point I'm getting at is that some very powerful players were subscribing to this theory of traditionalism that there was a new cycle forming and they thought they could use this energy of the new cycle. Uh, the, and I think they use the exact term of, of Kali Yuga. Um, mm -hmm. you, you say Kali Yuga is ending in 25 or starting? Yeah. According to like the Hindu belief system, we're in the Kali Yuga now, which okay. would be, you know, having gone on for the last few thousand years and that it's the period of darkness. Think of like, you know, think of Kali. She's like this, murderous goddess of death who symbolized is wearing like literally you know the bones of human babies or as a as a as a skirt you know she's this very evil deity and that's the point like we're supposedly in that period of complete darkness and separation from god so according to the hindu hindu belief system each of those four cycles i don't know how long each cycle is it's a few thousand years um each of those four cycles, as you get away from the original one, you know, we supposedly separate farther and farther from God and, and mankind gets, you know, their idea of God and mankind gets more and more degenerate and more depraved. And, you know, supposedly that's coming to an end, hmm. which would go back to the first one, which is like being reunited with God and, and, and knowledge and things like that. So it's just it's, fascinating tidbit there. That really is. That's, a, that's actually a very interesting take because it, it, now it's got my mind going and other things because there's a there was a book, you know, because 
I've done a lot of shows about the Great Reset and Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. Uh, I've I've read his. Oh man, I should have put my blood so hat on, man. Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. Dude. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I'll post I'll post another image when we when I promote the show. There you um, go. <laughs> I should have worn my. Uh, I was chilly today. I should have worn my. I I have the shirt from your show. I should have worn it, man. You still you still got hats left? Are you still selling some? Or are you sold out? Uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say, but oh, okay. Um, moving on, moving yeah, on. Yeah, soon soon we may have something going on in that department. <laughs> it just like hasn't it. been announced yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, anyways, the great reset is a, one of these things, right? And they thought that the pandemic would be this catalyst for creating a new sort of way of living. Mm -hmm. uh, when you read the books, you know, there's elements of this great reset that I see and they, it doesn't sound bad. They paint it in a pretty good light. Uh, but you know, obviously, uh, ultimately I reject, I reject it because of the people who say they're going to provide us this sort of, uh, you know, peaceful utopia thing. It's like, well, I don't trust the world's richest corporations to right. be the ones to all of a sudden be responsible to take care of us. But anyway, yeah, I like the idea. Just not from those guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And when I was doing that research, there was a book written in the nineties called generations. I think it was called and they cataloged, uh, I think it was 20 year cycles of, of history. And, and I'll be damned if they didn't get it pretty accurate as to what's going on. Cause they were saying in the book again, written in, I think it was the eighties or the nineties that the year 2020 was literally going to be a year of massive upheaval and change. Wow. So I, I, there, there very well could be something to this idea of, of cycles. And I think the people, these elites who, you know, people like 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 you know you and me and, and and people listening probably we're just doing our best right we're mm -hmm. we're working we're trying to you know pay off bills and maybe save up for retirement whatever mm -hmm. but there's people in positions much higher that have that all taken care of by far and they've got they're working on something else they have unlimited wealth it's beyond our comprehension yeah and and that's the kind of people if if we want to talk about project bluebeam in the the uh the coordination of this, I don't know, revelation of the method, it would be those kinds of people because they understand, and whether it's true or not, but they, they believe that there are these cycles and they probably say, okay, well, when's the next cycle come 2020? Okay. Well, let's be sure to incorporate a lot of the changes to sort of, uh, you know, what do you call it? Like don't fight the wave surf. Right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, getting back to the blue beam, by 2025, they're saying they're going to prove to us the existence of extraterrestrial life. And they actually have this, this mission to Europa where they think they're going to bring back uh, some kind of alien bacteria or something. And what's interesting is that that's actually in the, uh, the sequel books to 2001 in Space Odyssey. Mm. Uh, yeah, because they go to Jupiter, right? Yes, um, in, in the first one, I mean, right. Aren't they going to Jupiter? Yeah. Well in the book. Okay. So in the, or the moons of Jupiter, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of how it goes. Cause in the book they went to Saturn, but in the film they went to Jupiter. Uh, the claim was that he couldn't reproduce the rings of Saturn on film, which is mm. kind of weird. I don't know if I buy that, but yeah, I don't either. I think it was too much, maybe revealing too much. I don't know. But anyway, the, in the books, uh, the third one, 2061, they go into detail about, about how these this, the alien life forms that you see in the movie 2001, the alien life forms, they evolved by they evolved mankind, and what they did was they they created a uh, a second sun in our solar system, uh, and they call that sun Lucifer, uh, and and mm -hmm. it it goes on and on about how oh this is a much brighter, better sun, and I think that's what Project Blue Beam is all about, is wow getting that's us. Fascinating. Yeah, I think it's about getting us to understand the elite bohemian grove type people's religion of worshiping Lucifer. Um, and of course, you know, when they when I say they worship Lucifer, I don't think they're uh, worshiping a guy with, with, with the uh, horns and the pitchfork. They look at it as an angel of light, you know, and they think it's OK. Lucifer is the fallen angel rejected by God because lucifer is just trying to make us live a better life and not be subservient to god like that's that's kind of the core of what they believe 
And I, I think that, you know, how how do they get us from, from where we are to there? I, I don't know. Project Blue Meeting is one of the theories of how they will do it. And uh, there, there's, you know, in the book, I go through it and through a whole, ch- I mean, it's like probably 20 pages of trying to explain what's going on. Yeah, recently I've been in uh, quite a heavy theosophy kick, like studying it, researching it, because one thing we like to do on BSS is we like to take these, you know, really deep esoteric concepts and break them down and kind of like synthesize it into a pitch and like, you know, explain it to the audience. For me, at least, that's just super fun. And like I've I've read um, one full theosophy book by one of the most recent, uh, you know, prominent people from there or whatever and like from what i understand from their perspective is that the idea of lucifer is just a metaphor about like us in the way ancient past being completely spiritually perfect beings you know if land if atlantis exists or whatever and that metaphor is about falling into material reality you know what i mean like think about it like if 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 there's some idea of us being these perfect spiritual beings and then our ego or whatever gets out of control and we basically mess that up and we fall into spiritual reality. And then they also say, but on the same turn, Christ is like the way back. I don't know. Like I, I think that there are my, my take on like the really dark occult groups is they're into like complete breakdown of what is sacred, what is, what is holy, what is, you know, the family unit, what's normal, just complete reversal of anything that's considered natural. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, that, that's, uh, that's actually interesting. I, I, I had a, um, I had a, <laughs> how much do I want to get into this? Um, as much as you want. <laughs> so I may or may not have, taking some things to alter consciousness and I was watching twin peaks. Right. Okay. And while in, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that's hardcore. Um, and I had this sort of, I don't want to say a vision, but I, mm-hmm. I saw there was a part in episode one. So this will be, you know, this is just episode one, right? It's not spoiling mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And I've seen it too. So, okay. So just uh, the first one. Laura Palmer, they find her, she's dead. And they tell, uh, Sheriff Truman goes to visit her father, Leland. Leland, yeah, Leland Palmer. And he he's he's on the phone with someone else and he his wife and he's really horrified because he sees the cop and they've been looking for Laura, they can't find her. And he realizes his daughter's dead and he 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 drops the phone. And when I watched it, it seemed to me that it was almost clearly showing me this um it like in a way it was the phone cord was showing that there's a, a dissension of consciousness and and that was one of the theories mm-hmm. i'm i'm trying mm-hmm. to sort of parcel out is is this show because there's enti- there's a theme of sort of entities in the show mm-hmm. is it showing us that because i do believe that um you know aliens entities whatever you want to call it angels demons whatever it's all about ascending and descending through consciousness planes. And I mm-hmm. don't ask me how it works. I, I don't know. Right. Yeah. But, I, but there's something to that. Yeah. Um, it and, is. And in theosophy, I, I, I think that correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not an expert on it, but I'm not either. I'm not I, an expert. Okay. It, it's hard to read those books. I've, it is. It's I very tough for reading one. Um, the, I, I think that she Blavatsky kind of, supports the ideas of kabbalah where they think that our our spirits our souls kind of descend down into the material plane and as it goes down it's sort of you know gets further from god in a way mm-hmm. and what the occultists the theosophists the kabbalists do is they try to sort of do practices to ascend their consciousness back up to the top of the uh, tree of life right the kabbalistic tree of life um and, that, and that's interesting you brought that up because I, I wanted to tell you uh, the um, listening to your guys' Wizard of Oz show way back when mm-hmm. actually planted a seed in my head because I hadn't, you know, I've watched Wizard of Oz growing up as a kid a bunch, but I can right. tell you the last right. time I sat down and watched the whole thing. 
And I was like, oh, that's, that's, you guys are bringing up a lot of good points. So I sat down and watched the whole thing, and, and I ended up going down this Wizard of Oz rabbit hole about a month or two ago. Yeah, like, I didn't know any of that. Like, when we did the episode, I went in blind. Like, that was all Nick with all that research, and I was like, Whoa. oh, really? Like, yeah, that was mind-blowing to me, all the theosophy stuff. It's, it's crazy, and I looked it all up. Like, he totally was a theosophist, the, the, create, the author of, of the book. Yeah, and he was, um, you know, because I ended up doing, I ended up doing, so I watched the movie. And I'm sort of, I'm sort of seeing all the symbolism, and then I'm researching L. Frank Baum, who who wrote the original story, and I ended up having to write or uh, do three shows about just the Wizard of Oz. You know, talk about L. Frank Baum, then talking about the movie, then talking about what all we're witnessing there. And I I recently just finished Re- Return to Oz, the uh, the, 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 the 80s the- one. Okay, okay. I was thinking of the James Franco one. I think that's just Oz. Oh, no, no. I, oh, God, yeah. I d- didn't even do those again. Yeah, I should probably watch those again. Yeah. And then you got to watch The Wiz. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it never ends. But but yeah, the, the Wizard of Oz thing is a massive uh, topic. And, and oh, man, I'm, I'm, there's so many weird, like, sy- synchronistic things sort of pushing me down these paths. When I, so, so I listened to your guys' show, I don't even know. It must have been a year ago, and I and I wrote it down. I wrote down on my notes because I because I keep a sort of tally of show ideas, right? In case I, as if I'm ever going to run out of crap to talk about. But if I have time, I'm like, let me dig into one of these topics. So I I wrote it down. I was like, okay, Wizard of Oz. Yeah, you guys brought up a lot of good points. And I finally got around to watching it in I think in November of 22 because I wanted to release the episode by Christmas because it's a big Christmas movie. Now I, I think it's Christmas. People watch wizard of Oz, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, it ended up become this massive topic. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Right. Um, so I, I, I'm doing all the, all these wizard of Oz shows and I'm watching twin peaks, not simultaneously, just kind of over the last six months, this has all been happening. Right. Right. And, I get done with the Wizard of Oz stuff I, and I'm still watching Twin Peaks. I'm on like season two at that point when I got done with all my research and you know, you know how this goes. You got to, you got to research and then you got to figure out how to make the show and put it together, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, kind of storyboard it. Yeah. Yeah. I got to kind of lay it out so that it's right. So it's not just all over the place. And, <laughs> and I'm putting the finishing touches on my Wizard of Oz thing and I'm, 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 I'm watching Twin Peaks and I'm sort of, researching a little bit about twin peaks just casually here and there as i'm watching the show and i find out that there's actually a movie a documentary about david lynch's obsession with wizard of oz wow so okay so it could be i did not know that so it could be speculated that he has a fascination with theosophy yeah and again i this is all all new to me I, i don't really know much about david lynch i don't know much about twin peaks and I haven't read into any of the theories yet. Um, I'm actually refusing to read any theories. I, I actually started to watch a four hour, uh, literally a four hour theory about what's going on in the show. I was about five minutes in and I thought, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do all the research on my own, come up with my own theory. So I don't get sort of tainted with someone else's theory. Um, and then I'll read the other theories and see, okay, what am I missing? What makes sense? What doesn't make sense? Um, but the David Lynch thing, he, uh, he's the, the the documentary was supposed to be released in late 22, and they they didn't. You still can't stream it anywhere. It's called Lynch Oz, and the one quote I was able to find about it from the filmmaker, he said, <laughs> David Lynch said, uh, "There's literally not a single day that goes by in my life that I don't think about the Wizard of Oz." Wow. So clearly. The components of that story are are somewhere in baked into Twin Peaks. And my I told my wife this, and you know we were watching Twin Peaks and the credits, they feature uh, bold green text like Emerald City green text. Mm-hmm. And you know, again, no that's idea cool. how this fits into anything. But she goes, she goes, man, that maybe that's why there's because the letters are very colorful and green. Like it kind of doesn't fit with anything else you see on the show. She's like, maybe that's mm-hmm. why why that is. Well, and, I would think Emerald Tablets. Or yeah, yeah, good thinking, man. Because yeah. there's actually there's a there's a literal uh, translation of the Emerald Tablets by Blavatsky. Like I I bought a oh, book. Really? Yeah, I bought a book that was um that was like a 
translation, a different translations of the Emerald Tablets. It was like seven bucks on Amazon. And one of like Sir Isaac Newton did one, Blavatsky did one, and there's a bunch of other names I don't remember. And um, yeah, I mean that's where my mind goes immediately. Emerald Ta- Emerald City, Emerald Tablets, and like what are the Emerald Tablets? It's supposedly where the whole as above, so below comes, you know, that whole thing comes from. It was mentioned there. My whole thing, man, like, are you familiar at all? And I'm not like pushing this on you. I'm just, I've never really heard you mention this. Are you like at all familiar with um, like what hermeticism is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I've, I've, uh, I've researched a lot of alchemy mm-hmm. and that's, you know, the, the root of alchemy comes from uh, ancient Egypt because, you know, alchem, it means the, the black fertile soil of the Nile River. And, uh, you know, I, I'm familiar with, as far as I know, here's what I know is uh, the idea that Thoth or Hermes Trismegistus, this sort of entity came down to mankind and said, here's the, the Emerald Tablets. Here's the secrets of alchemy. And, uh, you know, only the privileged shall experience this. And supposedly it was a real document. And I, I think it burned in the Library of Alexandria or was stolen or something like that. And, uh, you know become mythologized at some point that's about what i know about it i think the basic tenets are really cool it's just like you know we're spiritual beings here in the material world kind of like evolving and like that's the thing about theosophy like that you know in the very beginning of and by no means am i a theosophist and i'm just i'm that's my rabbit hole right now you know what i mean like reading it and trying to understand because for years i'm like man this this is weird this is weird stuff and i'm like no whatever and like in the very beginning of one of the books, Blavatsky says like this is an appeal to, to um, hermeticism. Hmm. So like, I don't know, man. Like reading this stuff lately and like diving into it, and uh, which admittedly I learned a lot about uh, some of this stuff from you, like listening to your show and then diving into it myself. But um, I've come to understand that like the if there's so to speak an agenda of the dark occult, which there clearly is, I really believe there is. I think it's like. I think it's like doing everything they can to terrify us from any sort of genuine spiritual reality, including Christianity, literally like including Christianity. Hmm. I think it's to terrify us away from any sort of spiritual existence, any sort of spiritual awakening, you know, whatever form that takes. I kind of like lately in my adult years, I kind of have like the detachment vibe. Like I know God's real. I know there's some force like, you know, Christ or whatever that like redeems us and moves through us and, and, and fills us with, you know, whatever. I don't, I try not to label things anymore, but I believe it's real and kind of like that detached perspective. You know what I mean? But Mm -hmm. I feel like the dark occult is like, no, 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 no. There's aliens and they're bacteria on Mars. And like, you guys can be naughty little freaky weirdos because there is no God and there is no nothing. There is no spiritual consequence to anything. And it doesn't matter because the rich are going to get on their little time capsules and fly to Mars anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's to scare us away from spirit and to keep us here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's about, it's about sort of grounding our consciousness in a way, because I think there's, you know, or more like burying it under the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I think I think you and I have a lot of common grounds, and that's why that's why I really want to uh, link up with you sometime and have some some in depth conversations because I, you know, I have a certain worldview and you have a certain worldview, and I, I, you know, when I read a lot of this occult stuff, like you talk about the uh, 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 Hermetic wisdom and the uh, Kabbalion book and all that stuff, there's elements when you read that, even like ritual magic, for example. I there's don't mess element- with that, man. I don't mess with yeah. magic, but there's it's element- fascinating. It's fascinating. Yeah, there, there's elements of that that I I do I, I believe it works. Um, mm-hmm. I do I do believe in some level of the you know as above so below law of correspondence of uh, like the one time you know what started me on my journey you know I I've been red pilled in two thousand two yeah two thousand two wow. I read Bill Cooper's book and um, I read Behold a, lot of a pale stuff. horse. Yeah, Behold a Pale Horse. Uh, my buddy in the military was telling me about it, and I went to a, a bookstore in, in Florida and, and grabbed a copy, and I was like, oh, this is fascinating, right? And then about 2005, I watched David Icke's Freedom Road, and that took me to some next level red pill. But um, in the 2000s, I was reading a lot of self-help books. I, was, I, I got into uh, What the Bleep Do We Know, which is about quantum mechanics and law of attraction type stuff, a lot of new age stuff, right? Mm-hmm. 
Um, so there's a lot of that new age sort of stuff that I've consumed. That's really, you know, I, there's a lot of good in there. In mm-hmm. fact, the one year I was, um, there was a, I don't remember who I read it from or where I heard it, but there was someone who was saying, you know, if you want to change your life for the better, don't be negative. Just, just say yes to everything that comes across your plate, a- any opportunity whatsoever. Don't, cause I'm, I'm that way. Someone tells me, Hey man, you want to go do this thing? I'm like, no, I don't do that. I don't, I don't golf. I don't, right, right. I don't climb rocks. Like I don't do that stuff. So no. And, uh, the idea was just say yes to everything. And I did that for a year uh, within reason. Right. Right. And, um, it really did open my mind. I think like, Oh, that's, that's really weird. Why do I shut down all these experiences? Mm-hmm. Um, so I do think that I, I agree with you, man. I, I think these occult practices, I think they could be used for good or bad. Right. I, I think, yeah, I, I agree that there's some forces that they're, I don't know, trying to ground consciousness. Um, and I think there's elements of that in various religions as well. They try to, mm-hmm. um, they focus on the wrong things maybe or something, you know, if I mean? you want it, you got to come through me and you got to donate. <laughs> yeah you know what i mean that happens but, a lot yeah, yeah yeah i think spirituality is kind of like i think we're hitting the wild west man we're like there's something real there's something i know it i've seen it man i've seen be- i've I, like you you'll you'll really you know you may have heard some stuff about us on the internet but you know there's there's going to be some experiences that we've had that when you read him a dad's book you're going to be like damn like they really it was like that you know what i mean and (laughs) like we've had some crazy stuff man like i've seen entities materialize in my bedroom after touching me and like leaving marks on me and you know seeing things like my dad and my mom were on the front porch one day and a truck drove through the yard and disappeared and there was nobody driving it like we've had some weird things happen to us which is like kind of cluing people in on why you know nasa and the cia was studying us in the first place because it was weird the stuff that i've been through and that's my whole thing is like Something is real. There is a spiritual force at this day and age. It's like to be an atheist in 2023, you know, even believing in aliens, like, come on, man. Like, well, you know what? Let me walk it back. That's why the alien indoctrination is so dangerous. All this, like all these lies about, you know, these physical, you know, we're shooting down balloons and we're shooting down orbs. It's, it's to, it's to further indoctrinate people into this scientific materialism, which is funny, man, because things like uh, the Rosicrucian texts, you know, love them, hate them. They talk about this, um, uh, theosophy and hermeticism. They talk about this, that the things that devolve consciousness are materialism, the, 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 the slipping into this materialism, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. It's kind and of then, a Gnostic idea a little bit. Yeah. But, I, like I, they, take it to, they take it to some extreme, I think. And they say well, everything material is evil. Yeah, no, I don't. That's not true. I mean, I'm thankful that I have a cell phone. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> right, it's right. the point. It's the point. Like to, in order to evolve, we have to break past the material. You know, I think I, I, I look at Gnosticism like, cool, don't take everything from it. You know what I mean? Right, I think right. I think the main point that like we are special people who came from God and therefore like that tiny little bit of him or, or her or whatever, you know, either, then that breaks open the rabbit hole man okay if duality is real then there's got to be some you know masculine feminine thing like it's it's just this endless rabbit hole but point right. is we come from that so we got to be special like that right right you know what right. i mean we got to be special if we're the children of god we're special yeah so well i think that i think um theosophy uh just one more thing on that but um i think theosophy was uh if I'm not mistaken, Blavatsky wanted to sort of be the first to reveal the, you know, centuries old esoteric hidden wisdom mm-hmm. to the masses. Like that was the yeah. idea behind it from what I understand. I, I think so as well. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. And, 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 uh, Oh, and one last thing on twin peaks, uh, <laughs> cause you said it, uh, when you read the books, you find out that the air, the certain areas contain, I don't want to say portals, but the right kind of energy to allow uh, ph- uh, the phenomenon to occur, mm-hmm. and 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 it's interesting because the book and the and you know this this was a show that was Twin Peaks was prior to X Files, so it wow you, really yeah when you read the books you're like oh my god the X Files basically ripped off Twin Peaks kind of in a way I mean yeah. And then you find out now, you know, now the government's finally admitting that, hey, we have, you know, different and en- different organizations and programs that research paranormal stuff. It's like, dude, they were showing us this stuff 30 years ago or 
shit longer than that. Thirty. You aware years of? Um, I'll clue you in on something really cool. Yeah. Um, you know Bigelow, how he did the whole uh-huh. Skinwalker thing. Yeah. Um, you know he started that and developed a lot of his like research on consciousness through the MUFON Star Team in two thousand eight. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Well, you know my dad's documentary first came out two thousand eight. It was MUFON Star Team. Oh really? Yeah. Oh really? Have you guys ever met Bigelow? Nope. Interesting. But yeah, we were one of the first MUFON Star Team cases. So just a cool little tidbit there. Yeah, they just kind of slid in and then they put out a really nasty documentary about us and then moved on. You know, probably trying to squash it. But um, hmm. yeah, it's it's like you know, there's definitely something spiritual. There's some sort of there's some sort of if you want to know the key to understand the UFO thing, this is going to sound weird. It's, it's something I say on the show all the time, but this this is just how I see it, man. It's like there are beings, there are angelic entities. Um that's the thing that we really shouldn't fear, you know. But yeah, then I you, agree with that. But yeah, then you I have the media, that. you have the media that's saying they're not being like you should fear them. They're saying we're shooting them down. They're a national security threat. Uh, mm. They're 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 counterintelligence disaster. Blah 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 blah. And that's gonna ramp up, dude. They're putting out these fake videos of like shooting down. Is it a balloon? Is it a UFO? D- last week there's this Pentagon report, but it was real. Um, Ex Pentagon official says that there's an alien ship, a mothership that's gonna send probes huh. to our planet. Why are they doing that? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I could see that because I had that same question when they supposedly shot down all these, you know, events in the one week that they all happened and they want to, they want to make us believe there's not really any footage or photos or they're not going to retrieve the wreckage. Mm-hmm. And it's like, really? Like, I don't, I, it's impossible for me to believe that. I don't know how people can just gloss over that and be like, Oh, okay. Yeah. They don't know what it mm-hmm. was. We're just going to move on. Like, yeah, it just makes you wonder. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like the idea of how they, they depicted in the movies. It's, it's, you know, it, it's to plant the seed in the, in the people's minds of, of what it could be yeah. so that down the road, if they want to come out and say, Oh my God, we need, you know, cause that's what, that's what the one recurring theme of all these events that the Pentagon talks about is they need more money and more, you know, resources of some kind to, to research this thing mm-hmm. and defense and protect yeah. from counterintelligence and all this blah, 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 militarization. But um, yeah, it's, it's uh, these, these entities. And I don't say this lightly. These entities are going to begin to reveal themselves more and more like on an individual level to the use and the me's of the world around the world. And like, that's why the people who, I mean, and dude, we, we know that the CIA owns the media. I mean, that was revealed in what, 1952, right? right Mockingbird right. and all that, yeah. you know? So it's like, it's funny that the big mainstream scare is all about aliens and motherships and all this and all that. Just, you know. Yeah. There's all, there's all these, these uh, financial interests behind the news, you know, all these, all these billionaires want to own the news and, and there's a mm-hmm. reason for that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I know you're feeling under the weather. I appreciate so much for you coming on today. Um, you know, I promised you would keep it to an hour out of respect to your time. So I personally enjoyed this conversation very much. Um, oh yeah, it, me too, man. Thanks for having me on. Very high level stuff. I, I honestly feel like there was, you know, we're just starting to break into so much interesting stuff, dude. So, you know, in the future we got to do another thing. Um, yeah, I'll have to come back for a third when you get a another repeat guest so I can retain my crown. <laughs> I let mean, me know when that happens. Honestly, man, yeah, got to make it happen again. But you you are our crowned second, you know, guest on Blood So Said So Ooh. other than family because my wife's been on twice. But that, you know, that, <laughs> to me that's not a guest. But um, you know, please remind people um where to find you, where, wherever you want to direct them, you know. Please yeah. give Isaac some love, guys. Real, I just want to say this. Um Isaac behind the scenes like not on the show but behind the scenes um was very instrumental in helping us get our show to the next level isaac personally you know got me on the phone with some of the heads of our hosting company introduced me to them got me linked up with them and like i'm indebted to isaac for that so please show him some love he's an amazing guy on and off camera so yeah man that's actually um you know i I like your show i'm a patreon subscriber i i 
you're you're one of my favorite shows. I don't consume a lot of podcasts, uh, but I I believe in your show. It's a great show, and uh, just to, you know the when I hooked you up with the uh, my host, um, there's actually there's a referral program, right? But I didn't want that. Like I didn't I never I've never taken money for it or nothing because you know I you can make like a hundred bucks for a referral, but like that's not what it's about for me. I I think you guys have a great show. I appreciate um, that, which is why I didn't want nothing to do with that that side of it but um yeah i really i really think you guys are kicking butt over there that's great uh as far as where they can find my stuff if they go to illuminati watcher.com there's up top if they there's a a a menu if you get free book uh you can get my first book for free if you sign up for my email newsletter uh it's just updates of shows and stuff and appearances and things like that and um yeah and my podcast is occult symbolism and pop culture on everywhere you get podcasts and uh you know i recently made a big appearance on coast to coast it was a a pretty big moment for me so i feel like i feel like uh you know god's been good to me lately so congrats dude we didn't even bring that up in the beginning yeah man that's amazing it blew my mind man that's that's uh you earned it on the on the shoulders of giants that show but yeah uh barring me being sick for six months god's been on my side (laughs) that's right dude (laughs) Yeah. And rest assured, you know, I'm studying a lot of this, you know, fascinating, you know, woo woo, new age, you know, wisdom tradition stuff. But like at the end of the day, man, I'm not really different than you. You know, I grew up Christian. I think Jesus is literally the best example of any esoteric or exoteric literature. Like I'm, I'm basically like, I'm basically like uh, a really out there new age Christ guy who just happens to believe in like reincarnation. You know what I mean? But like down with that dark shit, man. So yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So on our show, when we're, you know, I don't know if you remember how we ended, but we say bye guys. So it's just the tradition we got going on. So on the count of three, one, two, three, bye guys. Bye guys. (laughs) Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more, check out our other videos. And before you go, Don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Peace. Peace.